Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host Jinx and as always we are joined by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, Going to kick things off this morning with uh, community updates from Pocket Network via Zach. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, good morning. What is it? Wednesday the 8th. So community yeah. updates. Um, uh, so obviously the creds vote failed um, last week. So uh, update is that we are getting another proposal that uh, I think we're aiming to have out later this week, if not early next week, which addresses most of people's issues. So looking forward to more discussion around on that. Um, anybody who has a quick grant, uh, I've done my reviews yesterday. I just have a final pass with Shane that I got to go through today. So expect to get an update later today on the quick grants. Um, same with the transparency report. I apologize again for being late on that deliverable. Um, we're just doing a final pass on some numbers and that'll get out today or later today as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other. I know we have a Twitter space tomorrow with um, with ads and I think that's like the majority of my updates this week. Is there anything that I am missing? Like anything that people are expecting an update on? Feel free to drop it in chat. Work. And uh, I appreciate the transparency on the uh, transparency report. No. <laughs> Okay, and protocol updates. We've got uh, Shane Olshansky on. Y'all want to give us an update on that front? Yeah, uh, things are moving. Um, we actually, uh, uh, yeah, we, uh, right now the protocol team, they're literally doing buttoning up for the, uh, for the public mainnet right now. Uh, we're obviously hoping uh, to launch, um, you know, over the past couple of weeks, we've been hoping that uh, we can launch, uh, you know, uh, the next week, but it really does look like, uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna be launching here uh, in more matter of days than, uh, 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 well, possibly, we're, we're, everything is still, everything is still, we're, uh, everything is still happening very fast but things are really starting to come into alignment. Um, and then uh, we actually have a, um, a faucet that is uh, close to finishing as well, a uh, uh, Explorer that we're also gonna be uh, launching with. And so there's a lot of cool things all happening simultaneously. I'm writing a, what's almost like a light paper on Shannon that uh, we are, uh, that is going through the final touches right now and uh yeah it's going to have an insane amount of information that'll be just really cool to help people really understand what shannon is about and how it's going to be working um the good news is is we have completed an mvp tokenomics uh i've shared it with uh uh Oshansky. i've shared it with uh dermot for pnf um, and Ramiro from Pocket Scan, uh, and right now uh, a number of folks are are helping, uh, you know, vet it, tune it, um, things of that nature. So it's going to be, you know, an awesome final product with everyone's input uh, in it. But it is quite a milestone to to have an MVP for tokenomics. Um, we're able to address self dealing. We're able to uh, enable folks to. Um, uh, sources, as I've talked about before, uh, and the name is still pending exactly what we're going to call them, but uh, what you, if you want to call them sources or champions, whatever you want to call it, the the ones that uh, are building the actual um, uh, data sources themselves, like the blockchain clients, right, or the AI models uh, for when Pocket launches AI, those building the data sources themselves um, can actually generate significant revenue. Uh, within Pocket to where people are incentivized to bring their technology to Pocket to have suppliers uh, host and then to give access to gateways um, to allow users to access it. So it's really, really a cool system. Can't wait to uh, kind of share more about it. This light paper will do a pretty good job of, uh, you know, not calling it a light paper, but it'll, it's just going to be a long post, I guess you could say, but it's going to, 
provide a lot of information for people to start digging into with obviously more detailed information to come. Fantastic. So well, this, uh, to add to this, is, this is what we're hoping to uh, release this week is this full on um, overview. Excellent. Uh, nothing, nothing major to add. I think Shane uh, hit everything on nail. Uh, only thing I'll say is that everyone stay tuned for updates around Dan and testnet. That'll be an iterative process and kind of, we're going to get something out as a community. We're going to break it, uh, take it to the next step. But I think the documentation and the tooling and the fact that we're doing this on top of an existing, com like with an existing community and where everyone has a lot of knowledge of uh, how to run nodes and um, how the tokenomics at least work in the past and how they're changing forward. I think we'll be able to move really fast with testnet uh, into mainnet later this year. Uh, so, and just wanted to shout out and say thank you to everyone in the scan and launch channel uh, for all the feedback you've been providing so far. Fantastic. Yeah, and yeah, wanted to uh, uh, touch on something Oshansky had mentioned. Uh, yeah, we've got a pretty cool kind of phased approach that we're going to be releasing um, on kind of what the uh, the different phases we're going to have within the testnet, where uh, certain things are going to unlock at different times. Uh, we kind of have like a alpha. Uh, we have a few alpha phases, and then we have a few beta phases. Um, and so, uh, more and more information is going to be coming out about that as well, but folks should have a pretty good idea of what this uh, this this whole kind of mainnet um, era or, or testnet era is gonna look like. Beautiful, and Shane, who's responsible for writing uh, the uh, cutover protocol from one to the next, as far as like what's gonna get released to the public and such? Cutover, do you mean like migration? Yeah. Oh, that, uh, that is going to be uh, well. the The protocol team will heavily be involved in that. Um, yeah, that that will be something that will be heavily involved with the protocol team. Uh, we are uh, we are looking at others, um, uh, other contractors for things like the wrap pocket migration. So certain elements might actually be going to uh, you know contractors or people inside of the ecosystem uh, that are competent in particular areas. Uh, but a lot of the migration will likely be built in house with the uh, with the protocol team because they're the ones who really understand not only Morris but they understand uh, Shannon as well. So, uh, but uh, but more information about that uh, will will start to happen uh, kind of in the later versions of of testnet in terms of um, starting to uh, you know work on migration uh, actual migration features and things of that nature. Um, that will that will begin in later parts of the testnet uh, phases. Gotcha. I've got a lot of questions but, that have been floating around the community in regards to you know migration in place and if wallets are going to change and and all the rest of that. So um, a resource for that would be great. Yeah, James. Let me jump in. I think this was a really great and really important question. Um, so basically, Shane and myself are going to be the ones driving the migration, uh, but we'll be looping in you know, yourself and other members from the community along the way. Because when it comes to the migration, there's the very, you know, low level technical part of it, which is how our governance parameters gonna change, right? What's being cut, what's new, what's the transition. Then there's the tokenomics piece that Shane is kind of heavily driving right now. Um, then there's gonna be uh, gateways, right? There's gateway server, for example, that some gateways are using. Uh, there's gonna be, and that's the case that they'll need to integrate with. Um, specifically, I think the most user-facing one that you just hit on are wallets, because we want to be uh, Cosmos SDK and IBC interoperable, and that is going to be a different signature scheme for the wallets. So that's actually going to be a pretty big effort where we'll be working with exchanges, we'll be working with node runners, uh, and I think that um, that sliver alone will be a pretty big effort in itself. Uh, but once that's done, you know, we'll be able to use off the shelf wallets such as Kepler, for example, and make uh, and make cross chain uh, composability much, much simpler. Uh, and in terms of timelines, like if you're curious when we're gonna 
uh, kick off that specific migration effort. It's probably not, uh, definitely not for another month or so, but when we do kick it off, uh, every piece of the migration will have a document uh, to support it uh, to make sure everyone's on the same page. Beautiful. And CryptoCorn asks a follow-up. Uh, what's the latest answer to when someone asks when will Shannon Mainnet be released? Uh, there's some additional uh, text to the question, but uh, I pointed out the other day that uh, the official docs are still projecting June, but given the the uh, launch of testnet, uh, clearly that's not the case. So uh, some updated guidance there would be great. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not June. Uh, the docs are outdated and we'll, uh, I'll just, we'll loop back and make sure to update those to give as much uh, visibility as possible. So sorry about that. Awesome. But we'll update it by within the next week. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, the, the cool thing is, is people will be able to kind of track the progress of testnet um, by uh, what phase we're, we're in, right? Um, so that, that's the benefit of kind of laying everything out in a phased approach with, with testnet is, uh, yeah, progress will be more or less be able to be measured directly from what phase we're in, what, uh, what elements are we testing, um, and uh, uh, yeah, versus uh, yeah, versus kind of doing things in a uh, strictly like a date approach, right? Um, yeah, we'll we'll be able to start seeing progress more uh, directly and start to also get a feel then uh, as we're measuring this progress, uh, be able to get a more concrete idea on when exactly mainnet will be feasible. So fantastic. Well, I'll check the updated docs and uh, make sure that I'm as up to speed as possible for when questions come through my communities. Let's move into the uh, gateway updates now. Uh, Gabby, any updates on the Grove side? Yeah, two things. Um, first thing, we are launching ZK Sync and Blast Archival today in the portal. Um, the guys are working on that right now, so hoping to have it out by this afternoon. Second thing is that we are moving forward with a small pilot for LLMs on Morse. Um, so I'm hoping maybe about two to two and a half weeks time, we can allow list Llama 3 8B on network. Uh, what we're doing at Grove is we've got a very small group of like four participants who are going to help us out and send small volumes of requests over about a two to two, two to three week period. Um, and our goal is really to just see what the user experience is like. Um, and try to start gathering some basic information on performance and user expectations and requirements so that we can start forming a roadmap for go to market. Um, Coder has kindly volunteered to help us with this. So they have like, I think one or two machines that they'll dedicate to it. Um, but I wanted to call out that once the service is allow listed on network, any other gateway is welcome to send requests to it. I would just recommend um, making sure you coordinate with the supply side to ensure that there's enough machines to service your capacity. And as far as the supply side goes, if you guys are interested in supporting these sort of services, I would say it's probably not worth uh, time or money right now to invest in the machines, um, just because we're not going to be sending consistent traffic. It's a really short experiment, but something to start looking into if you're interested in supporting for like Q3-ish. Excellent. And uh, Ramiro asked, how are you going to allow us to specific model? How are you going to enforce that? So right now we're not taking any form of enforcement. We're just seeing what the quality is like. And so the hope here is that it's, it's uh, honesty, you know, honest policy, or what, I forgot the, the idiom there. On our um, system. Yeah. yeah, on our system. There we go. Uh, yeah, so we're taking the honor system. Again, it's a very short experiment. It's very low stakes. So if it ends up not working out, then that's okay too. Beautiful. Also, I, I think it's important to mention that the RTTM uh, will not be, you know, uh, will not be increased for this. So yes, uh, thank you. It's going to be low relays, which, uh, you know, like low re relays. So those relays aren't going to be paid more per relay. So if someone is wanting to, you know, it, there is no way to like milk, uh, yeah, milk, milk this for uh, extra rewards because it's going to be very low stakes. 
Um, so there really is an incentive for anyone to participate or anyone to uh, join um, with underrated hardware uh, because there, there's not going to be an economic value to this. What this is is more of a research value from my understanding. Exactly. Thank you, Shane, for that. Uh, and Ramiro asked, why not use TestNet for that? Uh, we don't see an issue with using Morse mainnet. It's, again, it's really low stakes volume. I don't see the, the issue with it. So also TestNet's one of those things where that could, you know, people can actually, uh, you know, people could potentially join TestNet just to mess things up for no reason, but just to be a, uh, uh, because it doesn't cost them anything, right? Anyone literally in the universe could spin up a node through a faucet and, uh, you know, start messing with things, at least on mainnet. Uh, you know, you have to actually buy pocket tokens. You have to own pocket tokens uh, to, you know, participate. So it it it, it weeds out any external uh, people from just, you know, creating a ruckus. So I think long story short, play that. along if you want to, but uh, don't be a jerk. Know that it's out there and uh, that it's being tested for for feasibility and throughput, uh, and it's not there for you to to mess with. The cake on the tables for when company gets here. Don't lick the frosting. Uh, we don't have blades in here yet, but we do have porters. Do you all want to give your update this morning? Yeah. Am I coming through? Yep. Sweet. Uh, thanks, Jinx. Thanks, everybody. Um, just a quick update from us. Uh, we are moving forward with... Um, getting our final wires connected. Um, we've got the upstakes um, and we'll be sending those transaction, transactions to stake, actually fully stake, so we can start sending relays to the network um, here by another week. And uh, next week we have uh, the first, uh, our first entry into uh, a lot of thing a chain coming up. Um, Tycho is coming on online, um, and Jack has helped us put out an announcement about this. Um, we'll have the testnet out next week, and then mainnet to be followed uh, when the Tycho team is actually ready. So I'm uh, moving along kind of on their timeline. We had one little snafu. There are two testnets that Tycho runs and the first one that we put out there was the incorrect one so that was a little bit of a mistake a little egg on our face uh but uh announcements updated and we got to it before they allow us went through so everything should be moving forward uh, but apologies on a little issue but yeah that's it from us beautiful and uh, I know that uh, Dev Dow and, and uh, some other folks are on here. Do y'all have any other uh, updates that you'd like to add to the the mix? I don't know if you guys are ready to start reporting in regularly yet. Nothing really substantial from us at the minute. I was I was super ill last week as well, so I think Crypto gave an update um, on product. We're kind of still mostly focused on our side of like shaping our go-to-market whilst the, the devs finish off the the work we were originally aiming for a like ready to use date of the 15th of may but i think we're pushing that back to the end of the month would be the hope that where we can have the system deployed and in theory it's it's ready to go it won't necessarily mean that's a launch date um kind of just considering business side of it and some partnerships that we're trying to do but um yeah, that's kind of where we're at at the minute. Beautiful. Uh, quick shout out to uh, the folks who are over on Reddit trying to make some noise there. Uh, if you are a Redditor, then um, please make sure you are subscribed to reddit.com slash r slash pocket network. Uh, that is our official subreddit. There's a couple of other uh, um, uh, connected subreddits to that. But if you're in there, that's a, a great start. And we could certainly use your upvotes and eyeballs. And I think that brings us to the end of the main updates. Unless, Ramiro, do you guys have any pocket scan updates? Uh, 
I'll take that as a no. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, uh, we have come to the open floor section of the call. So uh, whatever topic or question or point of interest that you have, now's the time. Come off mute and just uh, shout it out. Or you can also type in the chat if you can't come off mute, and uh, I will read it out for you in my dulcet tones. Beautiful tones. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to uh, prop up something really quick. Um, we are into the last phase of some research that we're doing around staking options um, and how to improve the staking experience, both for node operators and just pocket holders who want to stake. Um, and specifically, I'm trying to get some attention around or from uh, node runners, node operators, the node enthusiasts out there. Uh, we have a form in the node chat channel um, and just looking for some input so we can uh, try to understand your needs better and uh, present uh, present some solutions. So if you feel so compelled, please come give us your perspective. Thank you. Excellent. Other questions, thoughts, proposals? Yeah, um, I have a question. It's regarding governance. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, sound good. Yeah, um, I just wanted to understand what criteria existing um, voters use when assessing a new prospective voter. <laughs> oh, this is a, a topic of great interest. And I think that's part of the reason why uh, CREDS has gone through such an extensive uh, um, vetting period and, and a great amount of debate and consideration. Uh, I see Steve's on the, the call today. He's he certainly put a lot of time into researching and running through various models and such. Uh, I would suggest that the current status where people post a picture in the voter channel and their name and why they care. Um, I I mean, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I'm betting that it's mostly just Jack tags everyone. And so we jump over and put a green check mark on it. Yeah, I mean, Jack has, I mean, in my case, which I'm open and honest about it, I'm, I'm still waiting, not canvassing, not on the canvassing campaign here. I just want to understand the process. Um, because the seven days for me elapses tomorrow and I'm not hitting the prerequisite one third of the populace of existing voters. So it begs the question as to what motivates people to tick or not. Yeah, I mean, it, to be perfectly honest, I would be willing to bet that uh, a lot of folks aren't even really paying a whole lot of attention to it right now because it hasn't been a great system at all. Um, and uh, if, oh, Dermot dropped off apparently. I was gonna suggest that uh, uh, if anybody from the foundation wanted to address that, uh, um, you know, and, and a quick comment, uh, I'd certainly welcome that. Um, but just, you know, to, to be perfectly blunt, the system hasn't worked well. Uh, and I think a lot of folks, especially once they start moving away from people that they actually personally know and have worked with before, um, like it, this was fine when all the names going up were commonly recognized in the community. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as we got farther away from people who are working together on a regular basis or actively collaborating, the more difficult it gets. And yeah. because there's an algorithmic expansion of requirement of check marks as the count of uh, uh, voters in the DAO uh, grows, um, I, I think it, 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 every new voter has a harder time than previous voters mathematically, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> this is a system that has a built-in progression of complexity um, and, and may currently feel like playing uh, uh, Elden Ring. Um, yeah. you know, that's, be prepared to die frequently and save often. So, so, so uh, what is it? Is it, an, is it currently, until the new process is implemented, a, uh, a one-shot affair, or is it an iterative, you play until you win? Yeah, I don't think there's any, I mean, I'm not aware of any there's seven days. There's a seven, seven, there's a, there's a, it's 33% and seven days. I don't know if it's, if it's clear to the system, but it's certainly written in the governance section of the pocket docs. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not coded into anything because part of the right. problem is that 
is the lack of automation right now, right? Okay. Um, and in the new system that's being proposed, that's one of the big benefits to it is adding automation to that process, you know, using yeah. something that's on chain and, and can be, uh, and doesn't require this level of, of herding cats. And, and part of the difficulty as well is that, um, voters don't tend to remain very active over time unless they're very active in the ecosystem over time yeah. so there's a level yeah. of attrition that occurs you know if we've got um 75 uh voters and it's required to have 25 of them in reality that's 25 out of you know 50 uh, um, yeah. when you look at actual active participants so your requirements have realistically by default um gotten about 50 percent harder <laughs> you know yes understood yeah so, okay yeah so there's, it, there's, it, there's no hard cutoff at, at this juncture then. yeah and and if you ran out of your seven days and you weren't able to hit that i mean i would happily lobby along with probably most folks on this call um to just run it again and and try to get those check marks in place um, sure. i will say for the record that i had the single hardest time of getting a vote of anyone in the dow um <laughs> because i completed all of the requirements in about six weeks but then there was a yeah. problem with the voting tokens and it took three months to get mine issued sure. so believe me when i say uh, i i am deeply familiar with how terrible the process is currently um okay. coffee crusher you, you, when you mention automation do you mean creds yes uh automation is part of that cred system yeah thanks a lot James. maybe you maybe zach could reach out to all the voters and like uh because i think that's probably the main thing right now is just uh everybody knowing that uh, uh there's a verification required i mean in, in the short term zach is that possible yeah, it's very possible. I can message everybody. Um, that's usually what we do before a vote is I send out a DM to everybody. Uh, it, it has varying su success rates. Like the people that are active, like appreciate it. And a lot of the messages go unresponded to. Um, so I will do a, a shout out here. I think the people on this call that I message usually have a thumb. Up. Yeah. And I saw but, Jack had tagged uh, the at voter. Uh, yeah, he did couple of times so i mean we all yeah. got notified i i clicked the check but the thing is with with discord since they refuse to leave it as a wonderful well-formed well-designed app and keep fucking it up more and more and more uh it's getting a lot harder to see notifications and to filter notifications by yeah. things we care about versus things we don't uh, so i'd be willing to bet that half the problem is people are overwhelmed in notifications and not seeing that tag Sure. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I, 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 ju I just checked, and that's the reason. I, I mean, I just added a check mark, but I just did wasn't paying attention to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I will I will take this away. Um, can you actually just DM me? Uh, let me grab your name. I'll DM you right now, and then I'll message yeah. everybody until we get the checks. Uh, realistically, cool. getting 30, 30 people to tune in is not unreasonable. So I think. Yeah. yeah let yeah, me let me go ahead and do that. We can coordinate in DMs. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and if anyone from Discord happens to hear this call, we hate your updates, hate them, despise them, loathe them. We are literally only using your app right now because we're entrenched in it. You have enshittified it greatly. Yeah, Weeb3 says, I mute every server I join. I bet others do too. Yes, and the sad thing is, it still doesn't stop notification spam from those servers. Hmm. I feel like you have some strong opinions here, Jinx, and like I'm happy in office hours to offer some therapy later if you want to just chat through it. <laughs> Let me know. I I mean their app, their mobile app is almost unusable at this point. It's just so bad, so incredibly bad. And it's funny because I think a lot of us migrated to Discord from Slack, which had went through the same cycle, <laughs> and Discord apparently has not learned the lesson from that. Oh, Usa. So, do we have anything else we'd like to talk about today? I feel a lot better, Breezy. Thank you. It's nice to have this safe space. And control the microphone. 
that certainly helps. Um, a couple of folks have asked uh, about a Twitter list uh, of folks who are active on Twitter. Um, in our uh, Pocto Price or Pocktopus Den channels, we track a lot of folks who uh, are active on Twitter, so you can certainly come ask directly. We also have a broad fire hose um, social media tracking channel on Telegram um, that uh, basically just captures all mentions of Pocket, um, and that's on both Twitter and Reddit. Uh, actually, it might not be on Reddit anymore since they changed their APIs, but at the very least, uh, um, all mentions on Twitter. Um, so you can subscribe to that, but it is it is very much a, a massive fire hose of posts, uh, including fuck you, pocket, pocket sucks, uh, which may not be what you're looking for. Um, so uh, I, I would suggest uh, if you want to pop into one of my channels and ask around there, you'll probably get a, a lot of decent answers on on who some of the common folks are. Um, and crypto porn uh, on this call uh, is one of them and engages with a lot of that content. So realistically, I mean, maybe start by following him and me and just seeing who we're engaging with. Uh, but I don't know of a master list right now. Uh, when are the changes for cred going to be posted? Might have missed that earlier. Yeah, I would say that you missed quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I don't think that uh, um, we have had hard input on uh, those changes yet. So uh, Dermot's still not here. Uh, Zach, uh, do you have any updates on um, revision process for uh, creds yet? Yeah, so we have an internal document right now that's being discussed um, at PNF. We're actually having a discussion uh, internally. I think I can say that uh, some of the staker weighting is is an internal uh, debate right now. Is like, do we keep the the staker weighting in or do we remove it? So um, I think one of the big things that Steve had brought up was like the one person one vote of it. So internally we're just trying to get to the bottom of like what do we what makes sense and what do we actually need before we put it back up for a vote um jack's done a lot of work on that so um i don't have an exact date for you but my hope is that we maybe by the end of the week we can post when we will have it if we don't have an updated proposal by the end of the week excellent that long-winded enough end of week otherwise an update about when we'll have an update <laughs> Please uh, make an announcement uh, about the update to when the update will occur. Yeah, three layers deep. Noted. <laughs> Other questions, topics? I see Zatar is typing. Once the update is posted, will it be possible to amend further? Uh, I mean, I won't speak for the foundation, but our general process is, yeah, as soon as, uh, you know, when it's published, that that opens up the next round of conversation. Yeah, Jinx is 100% right. The The plan is to post what we will propose, get everybody's feedback, see if we're aligned, and then um, once we've had sufficient time to argue, which with this should be two to three months, um, we'll then put it up for a proposal. So The two to three months was a joke, just so I'm super clear on that. I hope <laughs> we take a week. Pocket News already tweeted it. It's done. Yeah, right. <laughs> Other questions about governance? I do want to shout out to Zach that uh, I had posted a request to have a subscribable calendar uh, available for all of this up in the forum, and uh, they were quick to provide such. Um, so if you haven't seen that thread yet, go find that forum and subscribe. I mean, for me personally, it is a game changer to have this on my regular Google Calendar versus trying to track things through the Discord Calendar, which in another blatant failing of that development team uh, does not allow you to directly subscribe it to your personal calendar. I sincerely hope that some social media or PR person at Discord hears any of this. Leave them a Google review. See if they tune in. <laughs> oh, also, uh, shout out to Raid Guild uh, in general. 
I saw that they had put out a call for uh, input on further development stuff, including like one click staking and such. I think there's a couple of folks uh working on those some of those concepts right now um i've personally got a project where we're looking at uh like um uh ebm based uh representative liquid staking and that sort of thing a um, lot of interest there so if you haven't seen that post in the forum uh please take a look at that as well and see if you have any input you want to offer there Hey, and ask you welcome. Yeah, I agree, Tracy. That's uh, uh, like it's seriously simplified me trying to keep track of uh, Discord events and such, and now having governance uh, uh, dates on there as well uh, makes makes a big difference when it comes to tracking proposals. Yeah, under the ideas tab, we. I try to make sure that I keep my posts out of like anything related to proposals and such, because I'm generally not trying to make proposals. I just mostly engage in the debate. And just so it's clear, if anybody wants to add anything to that calendar, um, feel free to just DM me or, or put it somewhere where I'll see it. Uh, like Jink said, the, the point is to have all of the uh, event stuff in there, plus all of the votes, that way people know when to vote. Um, but if somebody has ideas for other things that should be on that calendar, let me know. And if you ever feel like something is off, I'm in Arizona, which is like the one place in the world that doesn't do daylight savings times. Um, so I tried to set it up correctly, but if something seems off, just DM me and um, I'll get it changed. Honestly, we should all uh, um, follow that same process because daylight savings time is dumb. Uh... Jinx, what was that forum post you referenced around liquid staking? Uh, it was, let me see if I can find it real quick. It was uh, by Raid Guild, I believe. Uh, let's see, we've got topics. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Um, uh, where is it? It was here, I swear. I do not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Uh... <laughs> oh, wait, it's your post. Jesus. Sasquatch. Uh, that's amazing. All right. Well, yeah. So there we go. Uh, I am happy to add the link here. Oh, we'll get a triple show because I'll give everybody uh, an easy way to get right to it. Um, so it, it is up as a socket proposal, so obviously uh, funding some some core research, uh, but part of the uh, request is for input uh, from folks in the community and such. So uh, feel free to take a look and uh, uh, add your feedback to it. And th this is something that has been heavily requested uh, within the community. Um, making the process of participating on the supply side simpler. Uh, I know that there are a few different ways to uh, skin that proverbial cat. Uh, I'm working on one with uh, um, some providers uh, in the ecosystem um, and and happy to have other folks uh, taking different approaches and, and digging into the same thing. So um, anybody and everyone who wants to play uh, uh, in the game of moving that ball forward and, and making it easier for folks to participate, big fan of and, and happy to lend support to. We're getting close to the top of the hour here. Anybody else have any uh, updates they want to throw in?
going once. I see the TARS typing down there. Sockets now known as quick grants. Uh, yeah, I believe that's correct, Zach. Uh, yeah, FKA uh, sockets. People are interchangeably, but we're trying to use the term quick grant just because it is more broad in like all of Web3. So people have a general idea what a quick grant is, whereas a socket requires um, just understanding. Here, we've changed the name. Um, you're not y'all wrong using it. Is it again? I said y'all did all that work to brand it. Did and realized that it actually creates confusion, so we decided to simplify. <laughs> but yeah, quick hey man, one of the are... things I teach my uh, baby UX designers is uh, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Everybody knows what a play button looks like. Just do that. Yeah, totally. Um, using stuff that people understand is so much better than being clever. So. And uh, Coffee Crusher's typing now, which, what a great username. Nothing to add. All right, solid. Well, uh, if nobody else has anything to add, we are up near the top of the hour, so we can uh, wrap it up here. Uh, reminder to everyone that the open office hours call is this afternoon from 4 to 6, same place. Um, and, and there is no uh, structure or agenda to that or anything else. It is strictly in office hours in the truest sense. Uh, come in, chat, hang out, ask wild, ask questions, uh, uh, you know, do whatever you like. It's uh, free form. So I will encourage you to uh, join that 4 to 6 p.m. EST in the uh, same channel this afternoon. And aside from that, that wraps us up for this week. So we will see you all again, same time, same channel next week.